Hey, how you doing? Justin, back with you to talk about your practice for lesson five. First thing I want to mention is I'm not including the note circle as part of your practice routine. Remember that I've got a music theory course on the website as well, and the first few stages of that are completely free. They include some exercises and some worksheets for this sort of stuff, so if you want to get a little bit more into the music theory stuff, you might want to go and check that out. There'll be a link, as usual, in the description for this lesson. Let's talk about your 20 minutes. We're going to start off with two minutes of the finger stretching exercise, really trying to work it down now further toward the nut, making sure that you're really feeling a stretch in your hand when you're doing that, not so it's painful, just so it feels like a stretch, okay? Make sure you know the difference. You don't want to hurt yourself here, but you, it, this is a really beneficial exercise, particularly for those with small hands that need to really work on the stretch. We're going to do that two minutes. Then we're going to do one minute of C chord, chord perfect. So just taking the chord off, put it on, strum, pick out, one at a time, make sure it's all good, strum again, make the corrections, the usual drill. You know about this by now, so one minute of that. Then we've got another one minute of chord perfect on whatever chord you're struggling with the most. Now, for me, it was most often the C chord because that's a hard chord. So don't be surprised if most of your practice between now and the next lesson is going to be on the C chord. So you, for most people, it's the hardest chord. If you're struggling, say, with D as well, which is another chord that I found hard with the, on the lefty playing, so it would be okay in this second minute to maybe work on C chord and D chord, alternating between them. Not one minute changes styly where you're trying to go fast, just each time trying to make sure that the notes in the chord are as perfect as you can make them. That's really important. Then we go into one minute changes, and the ones that I'd recommend that you go for this time are A minor to C, which is just moving one finger. It's going from your A minor, relatively simple chord, and then your second finger will slide up a little bit and you'll move your third finger. So just getting used to moving between those two different chords, really, really important chord changes. A minor and C appear in songs together all the time, so definitely worth practicing that. Then I've written down that we should be doing C to E minor, which is another very, very common uh, chord, practice, chord change that you're going to encounter in songs quite a lot. You are able to change these up though. If you find there are other chord changes that you're really struggling with, you can change it up to, because you should always be working on the chord changes that you're finding the most difficult. Then we've got two minutes on strumming. So working with a metronome, picking a strumming pattern and trying to keep it nice and consistent, possibly exploring variations every four or eight bars if you want, but mostly, most importantly, working on it, feeling relaxed and playing it with the metronome and getting your synchronization with the metronome really strong. So your down strum and the down click on the metronome are happening at exactly the same time. That's really the big key thing you should be working on there. We've got then two minutes on working on your riff on Come As You Are. Like I said, we're not trying to nail that riff by the next lesson. It's an exercise, it's a riff, it's good fun. Hopefully you enjoy doing it. So just give it two minutes of trying your best to keep the notes nice and clear, working on your pick and making sure you're picking on one note at a time, the notes are working out right. Lots of things to think about and learn in that exercise. And then we're on to our 10 minutes of song practice. Loads of cool songs that you can work on now. So hopefully you'll enjoy my suggestions that I mentioned earlier as well. I think the ones that I worked on for my personal lefty practice were Eleanor Rigby, Get Lucky, and Black by Pearl Jam. Eleanor Rigby by The Beatles, of course, Get Lucky, Daft Punk featuring Nile Rogers, of course, Black by Pearl Jam. All fantastic songs. Quite often you're gonna find G chord and C chord with each other. So being that we haven't learnt the G chord yet, uh, you might find some of the, the songs that you think, like, oh, this one's got a C chord in it, but you're gonna find a G chord in it. Just wait, we're gonna be tackling the G chord next lesson. So just this, this one week or two's worth of practice on these songs or any other ones that you've got that you're working on uh, and we'll be through. Uh, as far as the, the, the big question of uh, when to move on, you're probably kind of familiar with the drill, right? So I want you to have memorized the note circle so that you're familiar with your sharps and flats and which notes are white notes and how tones and semitones work. That kind of thing is just a one-off memorization of that. You should have memorized the C chord as well, of course, all of the other chords that we've learned before. The one minute changes but involving the C chord that we've talked about specifically, trying to get it over 30 changes in a minute, preferably a little higher if you can, but 30 would be a good minimum now at this point. The strumming, 
you should be confident at making your own strumming pattern up and practicing it with a metronome at a reasonable tempo, say between 80 and 100 beats per minute. Really trying to feel the down strum with the click. For some people, that's going to be really difficult. If that's you and you're really struggling with it, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make another video just to focus on the strumming stuff, like, a, you know, a play along strumming video or something. Strumming is generally considered to be the hardest part of learning the guitar. Okay, learning to strum in time and not letting the strumming go when you make the chord changes or if you fumble on the changes. That's the hardest part. And that's why I recommend so much my beginner song course app, not just that it's a product that I want you to buy, but we designed it so that you're working on keeping your rhythm consistent and playing along with the backing track. It's the closest thing you're gonna get to the real world of having these drums, bass, or other musicians or whatever to play along with. It's really keeping on that timing, you know, trying to keep that strumming hand nice and consistent and even. That is the key thing there. Uh, the riff doesn't matter it's just an exercise see how good you can get it by next time and the songs one of the songs that you choose to work on maybe getting it to a reasonable level where you can play it through but there's not really a specific like now you're good enough that would be really complicated to try and figure out so just where you feel kind of happy with at least one of those songs um, remember in your song practice you don't have to do loads of different songs you could just put all of your energy into one song that is a good idea as well Depends a lot on your personality type. I like doing a few different songs, and then I tend to focus on one for my, you know, for my repertoire. Um, but it's up to you. Some people will prefer to have lots of different songs that they work on to keep them interested. Other people will get more satisfaction from really nailing down one song. You have to make that decision for yourself. So wishing you an awesome week or two of practice, and I'll see you for more very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.